Hello everyone, this is Teddy Kekset from Forex Trading Unlocked, and we are here with a Forex Trading for Beginners webinar for you. Before we get into it, <clears throat> we just want to remind you that this webinar is for illustrative and educational purposes only. Also, if you have not done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Forex Trading Unlocked, and our Twitch channel also, Forex Trading Unlocked. And when you also get a chance, go to Amazon.com and check out the book High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns written by yours truly, truly Teddy Kekstet. It's available in paperback and Kindle versions. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of Forex trading for beginning. So one of the best beginners. So one of the best places to start is at forex-trading-unlock.com. That is our company website. This is our home page. On the home page, we always have when we're streaming live. We have, uh, which right now we are. You can see uh, what is going on is as it is occurring. Uh, then we also post our uh, weekly analysis also. So you can just go to our home page and get that information right away. As a little breakdown about us, if you haven't already downloaded the Ninja Trader platform, I highly suggest that you use this. Um, you can access it from uh, any one of our pages. We have a uh, Ninja Trader download tab. Also, from our tools, you can, from the navigation bar, click on the Ninja Trader uh, platform or the multi charts trading software platform. Great platforms to check out and use. Uh, Ninja Trader is free. Um, for um, all basic users um, for end-of-day data and you can use it for Forex futures stocks you name it so <clears throat> but for us we prefer that you check out the uh, Forex trading unlocked nav bar and go to the workstation page because we have everything set up very convenient for you from this page you can start your day where you can check out our live streaming analysis you can also then step and look at the calendar you always want to be aware as a beginner especially what is going on in the world as far as news events uh, the nice thing about our calendar is it's arranged on a daily basis and goes by the different uh, countries so you can see like for instance here for the euro you have the the COVID-19 uh, numbers then you have for Japan you have large-scale retail uh, sales yet coming out today for new, uh, the, uh, new Zealand you have this and then you also have on the 31st consumer confidence blah 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 you can see how that goes these are all um, brought to you by TradingView that we have access to on our website the nice thing about using forex-trading-unlock.com is that you can see as we're doing this live there's not all kinds of pop-ups. You don't have all kinds of uh, marketing ads and things like that that you would if you were to go to some of even these other sites like uh, TradingView or what have you. So we try and keep it limited so that you can uh, access this stuff from whether it be a cell phone or a tablet anywhere in the world. And you don't have to worry about logging into an account and you can check analysis and get your news and actually do some functional things as well. So when you come down to this page, as you can see, we have it set up with the euro as our uh, initial market you can always change these at any time like here we'll put in the US dollar JPY as you can see it then changes it and it gives you all these other bits of information we're going to go over that in just a second so also you can pull up things like XAU USD the gold this is all live um, in action the only thing that is delayed would be something for instance like CL1 Let's say you wanted to look at crude oil. Futures contracts are in delay. You can see that it says May 27th. So by law, um, you cannot have live futures data unless you're paying for it. So you can't broadcast live futures data. It has to be in delay. So that's the um, <clears throat> one thing that will be in delay on our website, but it is all free for everyone to use. And you can see how even for when you pull up these different markets, it gives you the curves, it gives you uh, performance and how it's done on a weekly, yearly basis. It has other technicals as far as whether it's in buy, neutral, and stuff like that. So these are all very uh, useful tools that you can use. All right, whoops, put the wrong symbol on Euro, US dollar. Okay, so once again, <clears throat> we get back to here. And you can see on a Forex basis that it gives you the um, current market quotes. So this is all live in action. It gives you some basic numbers, some performance numbers, and also some technicals. You can click on more technicals, and this will give you it on a different breakdowns of, say, the monthly basis or the weekly basis. You can see how it changes, 15 minute, one minute. You know, so there's all kinds of ways that you can get information like that readily at your fingertips. 
for time frames for the charts you can use uh, access to right here you can go on the hourly right here really quickly you can go to the 30 minute it gives you different time frames really quick accessibility um, you can see that as uh, the euro was trading lower into today's session once the u.s markets opened it is like a balloon underwater it bounced everything right back a lot of this could be because we're in front of a holiday market <clears throat> it could be a lot of profit taking uh, going on in the u.s um, you all now right now currently all the other markets are closed globally so uh, now let's go to the daily right here and you can see that the euro us dollar which had probed new lows on the day has had a nice bounce uh, the question is is will this rally continue um, i believe that at least going into the holiday market that you're probably going to see this trend continue going on into tuesday wednesday morning so uh, remember that there is uh, markets are closed in the u.s we click on this make this a little bit bigger you can see how easy it is to manipulate these charts um, and uh, like I said, as we're looking forward to do our analysis into the week to come, uh, we're looking for this to make a higher move high off of this low. So why does he say that? Well, let's start with the very beginning thing that all Forex trading uh, traders need to know, especially in the beginning, is you start with trend analysis. So yes, you can see here the market bottomed out here in April. Just to make this a little clearer, we're going to go like this and go like this. All right, so this right here is where the market bottomed. See this little circle right here? So this set this major low right here. Going into that point, the market had been trending lower, as you can obviously see. And then once it hit this point, it started to rally. Now, of course, in the initial beginning stages of this, you don't know if the market is bullish or bearish on the, on the short run because the market's going up. That is bullish, obviously. Bulls go up, bears go down. So um, what, the, what you do see, though, is once a few sessions occurred, you keep on making higher move highs. You, every little pullback becomes a higher move low. And then we boom, we continue to make higher move highs, come back down a little bit, make a higher move low, and then boom, we come. And the trend is that higher move highs and higher move high lows. It gets a little clearer as we get closer into these areas here. So for here, we have a high, and then see how we can mark with the text really easily. We have a low, and as you can see with those highlights now it should stick out to you where these are highs and lows in the marketplace now when you have higher move highs and higher move lows that is a uptrend now if it was the opposite where you were making lower move highs and lower move lows like for instance here where we had a high we had a low lower move high lower move low lower move high lower move low that is a downtrend this is an uptrend so that's one of the key things for basic analysis for forex traders that you want to key off of is establishing your trend if you know what the trend is then you can look for trades um, there are counter trend trades and there are trend trades uh, <clears throat> typically especially for beginners you want to focus on trend trades to trade counter trend trades takes much more experience um, they have a lower probability of success um, so uh, how you manage your risk in counter trend trades and trend trades is different. Uh, these are things that you learn as you expand your knowledge. Right now, this is all about for beginners. What do you have to focus on and look at? Um, basic fundamentals. Um, once you have these things down and you incorporate that into your discipline, which is your is your outlook for markets and whichever markets you approach every time you approach them you need to do these things if you skip over these steps you are already setting yourself up for failure so the very first thing for forex traders for beginning forex traders is to remember to acknowledge what the trend is now this is a daily chart so daily charts have a little less noise than for instance if you go down to say the hourly see the hourly all of a sudden looks is broken down it's a much tighter ranges there's a lot more noise going on there's news events that come out there's things that happen during the day that cause all kinds of gyrations where the market for instance here sells off real quick but then it buys itself back up and comes back up here and starts to chop around then we get to a point here where 
in front of, like, say, the U.S. market opening, the market totally tanks, U.S. market opens, reverses gears in a big way. Does that mean that every time a market opens, that's what happens? Absolutely not. Um, however, today, the news was what it was. The whole world is settling down into the end of the week as the U.S. Um, is the anchor man for the Friday trade. So, and that's probably what's going on right here, is that you have a Friday trade, Friday rally going on because the other markets are closed. Now, if you go down to 30 minute, you can even see even more gyrations. You know, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. There's a lot more going on. 15 minute chart, look at this. This looks like there's a lot of activity. What you have to take into account though is look at the range. Like for instance, these trading bars here, like if we look at this one, right here let me put the arrow so you can tell which one I'm talking about look at this green bar here the low of that day or of that bar is a dollar 2166 you can see the low is this number right here L I have this bar highlighted the low is a dollar 2166 the high is a dollar 2187 so that's only a 26 pip uh, range that's not a lot of, of market action when you take a look at the daily basis those bars are much more significant. So like today, the low is $1.2132 and the high is $1.2201. That's a 73 tick, or excuse me, a uh, 67 tick uh, range. So uh, that's where you have to look at uh, the differences. Uh, the scalability of the time frame has a lot to do with what's going on with these markets. So always be aware of your time frame and be aware of your trend as a forex as a beginning forex trader. So these are the first dynamics that you want to learn. And then once you start to get get those in. Um, a grip on those things that's when you start to incorporate signals um, trading signals is a totally different thing to uh, work with the first thing you need to understand is market direction what's going on so trend dynamics usually the best way to start is to identify a major swing low or a major swing high and then identify the highs and lows and figure out whether or not they are consistently making higher move highs and higher move lows or if they're making lower move highs and lower move lows. Uh, another thing to do once you have established that is when you find your lows, for instance here, you can connect them and you find the support. Now today is a good indication of where the market opened up. It was riding this upward sloping support and boom, it tanked, came all the way down and then shot back up and now it's positive on the day. So does that mean that support has failed? Not necessarily. There was a big extreme test of support and the market snapped back. However, it does show that the market was trying to establish what? A higher move low. After all, here is a high. Okay, so here was our higher move low here. And then here we have our higher move high up here. And now we're looking for the next higher move low and that's when you start to figure out do I look is it going to be a new buy signal or is it just the uh, a place where the uh, market starts to establish a uh, intermediate uh, churning trade uh, remember that markets do digest they don't just go from a low and then start making highs they sometimes start to settle into a sideways pattern so you never know about that when that that is going to occur there are indicators you can use that sometimes help um, remember now when it comes to indicators there are so many different types of indicators you can go indicator nuts as a beginning forex trader I would suggest that if you're going to use indicators you stick with something very basic um, one of them would be a stochastic okay so the stochastic here is an overbought, oversold indicator. As you can see here, when it's in this lower range here, that's when it starts to come into a buying zone. Now, when it gets into the upper part here, that's when you're looking for a selling uh, indicator. Now, the, th the thing about these is, is about indicators themselves is a lot of them are lagging, meaning that, they, that the market will turn beforehand. As you can see here, the market had been trending lower 
for a while, like for, if you look at here, it started, this indicator was already trending in the oversold territory. Everything down here is oversold, everything to the top is overbought. So had you started to look to buy when this indicator started to be in the oversold territory, you would have bought into this area and then you would have been losing money. Okay, so you have to be mindful of indicators. Um, they're very lagging, they do help. Usually what you want is you want to have more than one indicator lining up to give you an idea of what is going on. So if you do that, then that changes the whole dichotomy of what's going on with your analysis then. Because then you can start to use it where it becomes very functional. Okay, and that's one of the key things that you want to do when it comes to your analysis. So first we started, we identified the low. Then we identified the higher move highs and higher move lows, confirming that we have a bull trend. Now as you can see is that since we knew we were in a bull trend, your indicator here tried to have a little sell signal. When these lines cross, that's when they start to indicate that the market is selling off. Now if you would have used this first cross over here, just like if you would have used this first buy over here, you would have been losing money. So the key is, when do you know that this is not going to really be this and actually sell off, or when this is this, when it does sell off? Well, there's lots of different ways to, to figure that out. Now, just like here, as we're making this higher move high here that we had just made recently, you can see now we can sell off for the last couple of days. It's starting to grind here, and it looks like, oh, the indicator is looking like the market wants to sell off. Could be, maybe not. Remember that since we're in a bull market, we've been making higher move lows. So as the market sells off, it doesn't sell off very much before it returns to the trend. And that's why you got to remember when you're, if like for instance in this case, where we're in an uptrend and we're using an indicator when it starts to say it's over so overbought and it's ready to sell off, um, remember that's a counter trend trade. Now for instance here where we knew the trend was up and here we had this crossover right here. See where this low is here and this cross and started to go back to overbought. Um, that was a fairly decent buy signal because you're in a trend trade. This cross goes in the direction of the trend. And then as you can see, the market made another rally and exploded to the upside. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see if you can, uh, if you're catching on here as we add this next indicator and see where we're going with this one. So now one of the keys to uh, knowing uh, the market direction, like I said, is using these indicators. Now let's use a combination here. So we're going to pull up another really popular indicator, the uh, relative strength index. So now we have the stochastic, which is the first indicator here, and then we have the relative strength index. Now notice this one. You have your oversold indicator la layers down here near the bottom, and you have your overbought indicators here towards the top. Now see how when we had this low here, this crossed here, this was on the bottom, they both kind of worked together, and then here they did the same. Okay, now this one doesn't have any crossovers, um, but when you line these up together, they do give you some short term buy points. Now, this one did work for a couple of sessions, it just didn't hold out for a very long time. So, initial corrections, and that was also think about this this was a bear trend. So, when you had this crossover, it only lasted for a couple of sessions. That's a corrective move, it was a counter trend. So, counter trend moves don't give you these big long crossovers here for these indicators. So in a bear market you would expect the initial crosses usually to be a corrective trade. Should they be that, that's when they become this stuff here and then you know that it was only that. Um, when they start to go like this then you know that it is more than a corrective trade. Like this is where there was a trend reversal. Okay so with this one you can see this was in the oversold territory, this was in the oversold territory and then we get this big rally here with this. Now as you can see here, see where this crossed here? This was already in the overbought territory in a big way and then this, the lines crossed for a sell. Well this trend kept on continuing higher. But look at the relative strength. If you notice this one, yeah, it was heading towards oversold, overbought, but it hadn't turned yet. This one was turning and this one was stabilizing. 
this one here, when it went sideways, it did start to, to move down a little bit, but it didn't matter because the trend itself had been going higher and higher every day. So that's when you know it ne it's most likely digesting or the momentum is so strong that these indicators are always lagging, that the numbers start to skew in the overbought or oversold area. That's why you need to incorporate other techniques to know when you do your initial um, entry, entry for buys and sells. So now here, this one here is another one where it crosses. This starts to get in the middle. It gets really tough to read these indicators. So these are things when the market is trending on major extremes, you can use these to help give you an idea of when the market turns. But remember that there's a lot of noise to filter out where they can also continue the trend and these just don't give you any valid signals. These will try and point you in the direction of, the, of, another, of another direction, excuse me, when the market is actually continuing either to the upside or the downside. So let's get rid of this. Let's make this chart a little clearer. So once again, with, we see that indicators are very lagging. Okay, so now when they line up together, they do help to give you an idea of buy and sell signals. However, they, they are always in the lag. Now, I always say that the best indicator of the market is the market itself. Now, at the beginning of uh, this webinar, I told you about a book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, which, by the way, if you want to access our products, courses, and services here on forex-trading-unlock.com, you come down on this part of the tab, it says High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns. That will teach you, uh, give you access to um, a little bit of the book. You can see um, how the writing style is, and you can get more information about it. And in that book, we highlight how to trade these signals. So wait, let's make this a little clearer here. Let's make a different arrow. Okay, so this little red bar right here, just below the high, Okay, the previous day it made a high, then we have this sell-off. This is called a bearish, and bearish always means lower, engulfing line sell signal. Oops, not engulfing, engulfing line. Okay, so what is a bearish engulfing line sell signal? It's a high probable Japanese candlestick patterns, and it happens to be one of the most popular and um, most uh, highest um, value as far as being a good signal. Uh, it's probably one of the, I would say, besides being in the top 10, it's probably more in the top three as well. Uh, they are very significant. They work in all markets. Now, time frames is a big thing you need to be concerned about. You learn which time frames to use these in. Uh, in the book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns. Um, and just because they occur doesn't mean that they are a signal. You have to know when to exercise these. So let's give you a little clue and a heads up on how to do so. Um, so right here, we had this sell signal. And as you can see from that prior, from once this day was over, and this, what this is is a down day. See how this is red? These, when we're trending up, these are green bars. The down days are the red bars. So bearish engulfing line is a down day. Okay, so bearish down, uh, bullish up it would be the opposite if it was a bullish engulfing line. So what is a bearish engulfing line? Well, if you take a look, it didn't make a higher move high on the on the day, but this body, the colored part of the body, when you see it neg red like this, that means this is the opening, this area here, this is where it closed. Conversely, on an up day where it's green, you can see that that's where it opened. The market traded a little lower. That's the little candle wick there. And then it settled up here, and the candle wick there shows you the high of the day, but that's where it closed. So to, on this particular day, the market had opened, had made a... It traded a little higher after it had opened, then it traded lower all day long, made a low of the day, and then settled just above it. So that would be your bearish engulfing line because this body, this candle body, not the wicks, the body, it encompassed the whole trading range of the day before. So if it encompasses the whole range plus a little bit more, then that sets it up to become what is called the bearish engulfing line. Okay, so now this is a great sell signal that we like to use in all market time frames. Uh, now the question is, how far does it go down? So this is a daily chart, so you would have um, a daily projection for a downside target. Now for 
this is a beginning forex traders uh, lesson uh, we are not going to get into um, the actuating of these signals uh, that's a whole lesson in itself um, like I said check out the book high probable Japanese candlestick patterns you can access it through the navigation bar on our website or from amazon.com and that gives you full instructions on how to trade that particular signal as well as other signals so but this is something that I want you to know as a basic forex trader before you start pulling the trigger is you need to know these kinds of analysis so remember we were talking about indicators so why am I using this one well this is an actual signal so now let's go back to our indicators all right so let's pull up the stochastic and remember when these lines cross that's when you're looking for a buy or a sell signal now interestingly enough <clears throat> and we'll put a vertical line here so this day that's the wrong color to use though let's use um, that green okay so as you can see we have the bearish engulfing line this red day this line here shows you where this indicator is now when we had this crossover here there was no sell signal we had the indicator indicating that it was over overbought and ready to sell off but the trend kept on going once again we had here we finally had a crossover um, this is a big down day it's not a bearish engulfing line this is a sell pattern here um, but it's a very minor sell signal it did line up with this cross but still not a very valid one now when we use something like a bearish engulfing line oops we can spell this correctly sorry about that folks um, the bearish engulfing line we know that at that point if it the market has obviously been railing into a bearish engulfing line a bearish engulfing line is when you have a reversal to the downside um, it is a very valid signal does it fail all signals fail every once in a while this one on an average though is very successful at least in the short run um, to um, even the intermediate term where it does hit its initial uh, target signals um, downside targets in this case um, <clears throat> so since we have a signal and we have an indicator that was already initiate um, showing us that it was overbought and then it crosses that makes us very very um, sure of ourselves that a short-term corrective trade is developing or has developed okay so now you would look to, to see it the market travel down to um, an expected target area finding targets and things like that off of trading signals is a whole nother webinar in itself but right now we are showing you how in the beginning as a forex trader you need to encompass these things and also understand how they work and inter are interrelated um, there are lots of instructors out there that will say hey set the stochastics to this number and filter it we didn't even filter the variables of how these lines work you can skew these um, where they don't have as many crossovers um, where you filter it and you optimize it basically um, and you can optimize any indicator all you want um, which is good because certain markets you have to fine-tune them because they um, behave differently than other markets every market has its own nuances so just as we can see here from the stochastics where they cross over um, and then with the signal boom this is the one that is valid so because this one here we didn't have a signal we just had an indicator giving us a reason now let's also pull up something else we'll go back to our relative strength index this one here was in the middle and this one wasn't really giving us any reason so this is a thing where see if we were just relying on the two indicators we would have one that gives us a sell one that's in the medium chop zone it really would say ah, do we take this trade or do we not take this trade this would give us no information it would be a mixed bag of goods but with this indicator lining up with this sell signal that gives us a confirmation that yes we are looking for a short-term turn in the market for a corrective move that would target you know certain 
levels. Now, no matter what, this doesn't mean that we are looking for the market to become a big bear and all of a sudden it's doom and gloom and the market has turned. Remember, we're not trying to pick a top and we never want to try and pick a top or a bottom anyhow. This would be just a time where the market had been railing. It gives you a setup for a very good low risk, high probability sell trade. Conversely, this could be done also to the, um, as a buy trade as well um, for a bullish engulfing line. So this is a very simple way of incorporating your trend dynamics, which no matter what is number one. So your indicator here, this is one of the last things that you look for. These things you can definitely use, and I do highly suggest that as a beginner you use them. But remember, there's a lot of noise that can be uh, happening. And another thing is be careful of smaller time frames. If you think that this is hard to read and hard to digest and figure out, this is on a daily basis. The daily, the weekly, the monthly, they're not as hard to read as if you start getting into, say, the shorter time frames, like an hourly or a half hour chart or a 15 minute chart. There's a lot to filter out. There's a lot of unnecessary noise. And I highly suggest as a tra Forex trading beginner that you stay away from such types of time frames. To trade the longer term, take it's like this think of it as when you if you know people who are big gamblers you talk they'd have all these parlays and this and this and that and they're like oh if i would have just done this or if this just hit i would have gotten paid well those are all gamblers they're all would have could have shooters they're good rich quickers um looking for the quick kill that does not happen okay over time you're going to get buried doing that however if you wait for the market to come to you wait for very good valid trade setups um, definitely use very good discipline in your risk management then you put the odds in your favor and then when you incorporate having very high probable sell signals and buy signals on top of that with good money management and trade selection and then you start to open the doors to where you can become a successful Forex trader or any trader of any market for that matter. So that is something that you want to uh, always have in your forefront because trading is not gambling. So let's get rid of this, these two things here. So once again, trend dynamics. Always know whether the market is going up or whether the market is going down. When you have higher move highs and higher move lows, that's when you're looking for, in this case, you'd be looking for a sell signal as you make higher move highs, which we did here, and it became a bearish engulfing line. Now, for instance, you know, as the market was going here, there were other times where it started to sell off and came back here. Why wouldn't we sell here? We didn't have a signal, okay? Then the market bounced here. Why didn't we buy? Why wouldn't we buy here? Well, at this point, we have no signal. But here, as the market was continuing to trend higher, and now all of a sudden we have a sell-off, a counter-trend trade, because of the way it shaped up and the way it formed up, that gave us our entry into the market. And that's what you want. You want clarity. You don't, you don't want to be subjective as a beginning Forex trader. So this lesson, I hope, has um, really sunk in. This is a very basic lesson, and the reason that we are focusing on trend dynamics is without trend dynamics you can go back up here all these numbers and economic numbers that you need to be aware of especially the big ones that come out um, they're not going to mean anything you're not going to understand how to trade those numbers what the kind of influence they may have during these areas here before you get to a signal another thing is for instance um, when you have a signal like this that lines up where for instance you have big news which we did. We had some big oil numbers three days ago on Wednesday and some other things that came into uh, fruition, which maybe that's what caused that sell signal. You know, So the news events you need to be aware of, and especially when they have these signals that are going with counter trend information, those things line up with those other indicators like we showed you, and then shabam, you have a valid sell signal. Now, as you can see, this one came down to our initial target or just shy of it. If you read the book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, you would uh, know what that is. And then here you can see how it bounced today. Originally, this was much lower on the day. Now it's stronger. It doesn't mean that it's not going to fall apart on, two, on Sunday night when the markets open up. Because right now it's a Friday and the trade is winding down. It's a lot of reasons why we're doing this webinar now, because it's a little bit quieter of a trade. So, <clears throat> so the key thing, once again, is to remember your trend dynamics here for beginners. If you don't do that first, 
guess what? You're going to be on the wrong side. So for instance, like one of the reasons I send stress trend dynamics is that you want to know if your trade is in the in with the trend or if it's a counter trend trade. In this case, it's a counter trend trade. So in this case, when you are in a counter trend trade, your expectations for targets also is much more restrictive. Um, in this case, we would be looking for shorter term targets versus longer term targets. Now there's all kinds of ways to find targets and I'm gonna give you one of the best and quickest ways right now. So number one, we have the 50% rule. This has been valid for traders for a very, very long time. Okay, now what is the 50% rule? So you take, I'm gonna have to throw a horizontal line here. So this point right here is the 50% line. So what am I babbling about? So see this low here? This was a, it was, was a major low here that set this trend, okay? Here's a good short-term low also that there was a big correction here. The most noticeable correction in the past month and a half was this one here to this down into this low right here. Okay, so from here, as we continue to rally, we made higher move highs, higher move lows. Okay, so there is our trend. Any sell trade, once again, is a counter trend trade. So when you're looking for a counter trend trade, you got to figure that it's not going to go that far because eventually the upward bullish momentum is going to pull the market back up. So 50%, if you take this low, the value here, which is $1.1985, and you go to this high from four sessions ago, right up here, this last high, that's uh, at $1.2266, that gives you $1.2125 area as your 50% mark. Markets tend to, when they sell off um, and correct, a lot of times they gravitate towards the 50% area. This did not touch it, but look at, let's see what the low is. The low is $1.2132, and so it's only seven pips off. Does it, when it comes to markets, you're not always going to hit your target to the point. Sometimes it's going to go through it, sometimes it's going to fall just shy of it. Now, in this case, this is big information because the fact that it fell just shy of it means that the 50% is good support. We're looking for a higher move low. I mean, we're not going to say right now, um, we are looking for the pattern to continue, which is a higher move high, higher move low, higher move high, higher move low. We're coming off a higher move high. We're expecting the sell off because of the sell signal, but we're also looking for it to come and make a potential higher move low. Okay, so that's the big question, if you will. Is this a higher move low that was established today? And then we're going to go make a run for higher move highs. Is the sell signal over? Or is the market going to digest a little bit, settle where it is today, and then on the next trading session, come back down and test support? Well, anything can happen. We've already seen that most of the market action from our sell signal is hit. Because it's a counter trend tra trade, we're expecting it to only go so far. So you wouldn't expect it to come all the way down to 120 or 119 half, all the way down in this area. Could it? Absolutely. This could be the top of a new trend that becomes bearish over the next few weeks. But we're only into it for a couple of days. And since it's a counter trend trade, you want to take the money and run as soon as you can. So this would be a case where... For instance, today, where it had fallen just shy of a couple uh, ticks or, in the, in, or pips, excuse me, for Forex um, away from the target, you may have wanted to exit the trade had you been short on that signal. Um, also, if you're being disciplined, uh, once it hits very close to the, the sell that your target, usually you want to lower your protective stops. So in this case, for instance, and this is something you always want to take into account, um, since you sold the market, and in this case, the entry price would have been the close of this day, which was $1.2192. Had you sold $1.2192, your stop would have been up, which was the high of this day here. So that's a dollar, or that's $1.2266. So initially, you would have sold that area right here, $1.2123-ish area. You'd have the $1.2266 um, as your stop. Now, once you came down to this area, you would want to lower it. Now, these are things that starts to get into the actual mechanics of trading. 
this is a video for beginners where when you are a beginner you should not be trading whatsoever you should not even have an account okay because uh, you can get into paper trading paper trading um, is a crutch if you do not follow it the same way you would do when it's reality um, you don't if you're paper trading usually you have an account size that's much bigger than what you would be trading normally so um, it's it is a f uh, false sense of security in a lot of ways and also you wouldn't behave the way you do when you're um, when the markets are real um, so that's something you want to uh, as we give you other beginner forex videos here that we will get into how to manage those things but right now when you're a beginner start out these are the fundamentals that you need to watch and know and understand and when you have a grasp of them and have seen the markets move for a while and um and see how these things manifest that's when you start to get into the paper trading and then eventually get into real trading because there's a lot of things that you have to master before you get into um trading one is money management it is the number one rule um, but before you learn money management you need to know what the, what you're managing and what kind of risks are in, entailed and you don't learn that until you study the markets and learn the dynamics first and then the money management will start to become really clear as to not just what kind of profitability um, potential you have because there is always a profit potential but also what's your risk potential what is your potential risk of loss what is your what is your potential risk of failure you know um, for instance one of the biggest problems I encounter with beginning uh, and experienced traders is their lack of discipline when it comes to money management if you treat trading like gambling it is gambling if you treat trading like a business you will have the same type of results that you have in a business where there are ups and downs but you have the potential to be successful and to be profitable if you treat trading like gambling I will promise you that in the long run you will lose you may have some great swings to the upside and bring in all kinds of money um, but eventually with that kind of behavior you will lose you will lose money and you will eventually end up um, failing at the trading business so um, since we have showed you shown you these different basic trend dynamic uh, steps um, for all of you that are watching the video leave questions um, we will answer them uh, in the comment sections uh, of uh, the YouTube video remember to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel also um, that way you are uh, let then way you know when we have future videos that will be released so uh, this one was about uh, trend dynamics and the introduction of the basic things that you need to be aware of for trading Forex so remember the first thing is paying attention to the trend um, then as far as remember how we lined up the indicators you want to have a, more than one that helps to give you a, an idea of when the trend dynamics start to fluctuate off of new highs and new lows or new lows and new highs depending if you're a bull or a bear you know those are very important and then what's even more important is to have a valid trigger point so you need to have your trend dynamics you have to have your plan but you need to have a valid entry and an entry signal for whether it is a bearish signal or a bullish signal to help you incorporate your into to help incorporate into your trading system okay so you need to have a system that you follow and you follow it always like a robot never be subjective um, because once you become subjective then you don't have a system what you have is you gambling in the marketplace okay so subjectivity throw that out the window trade like a robot first find your trend define your trend see how it's moving and then you want to look for a signal that either in this case is a counter trend uh, signal or you look for where this market is overall a bull making higher move highs and higher move lows you wait for a sell-off and then if sometimes there's a signal like here this was a low risk um, buy signal now this goes with is a counter trend because of the sell in the in the short run but in the longer run a buy signal here is with the trend so this one as you can see here you had a nice explosive move to the upside then even though it corrected it stayed above this area here and is now much higher um, overall that's where when you're trading the action of the trend it's very big so then when you have let's say instead of having a bearish engulfing line sell signal here you had the market has been correcting lower like in this let's say if this was here a bullish engulfing line um which by the way it is <laughs> was wondering if uh, anyone here who's watching the video would be like hey you know you said that's also a uh, 
signal. See this little buy right there, this little green bar? Here we had the market break down for one, two, three, four, five sessions, and then boom, here's your bullish engulfing line. Look at this, made a higher move high. See what I'm saying? So we started out with the, the bearish engulfing line, trying to show you once again how these signals could line up you know, or how a signal will tell you when uh, a turn in the market or which way to um, direction you want to trade. But see, it goes also here. So since we've seen who is sleeping and who is not, let's go back to our indicators and see how these line up. Now, this is all live, folks. I'm not making this up. The markets are trading right now. Oops, that's the wrong one. We want the stochastic without the RSI. Stochastic, there we go. Okay, so see how we have the bullish engulfing line? Buy signal right there. Look at what, where it lines up right there with this cross. So once again, when you have these crossings, this is how you knew which one to trade. We had our high probable Japanese candlestick pattern that came in and told us to do so. It's making starting to become clear to you folks. I would hope so. I think that now you can see where you use your indicators here, but when you incorporate them with oops. There we go. When you incorporate these this buy signal here or the sell signal here and they line up with these indicators then all of a sudden you got your trade. So this would have been an in indication here, or this is what would have happened if you follow our methodology here. You have the patience, you see the trend here is developing, it's a bull, you're not in the market right here. Here we had to start, we began a correction here, you know that this is a counter trend wave right here. So right here, because you've been making higher move highs and higher move lows, you're looking for off this higher move high for us to find support. Well, the market did. Here was your buy signal. Just as here you had the market, it over, was oversold for so long. But look, at you would have gotten killed sell, trying to sell, 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 sell. All during this period right here, you wouldn't have made any money. You would have gotten chopped up. But once the market had turned, and this was a short-term sell signal, very weak one, came into this here, and then here, the indicator, it turns. Now it's in this middle noise part. When it's in this thing, you never know when whether these are valid buy or sell signals here. Usually you have to trade the ones that are above here or below here. But here we had this bullish engulfing line. And I'll write that into a little thing here. Bullish engulfing line. Oops. Buy signal. All right. So this is all live, folks. This webinar is not being created and laid out with pictures that just suit our needs. We are doing this, as always, on the cuff for you um, to show you how these things work. So you have your bullish engulfing lines, buy signal that popped in. Now, what does this mean? Remember, we're in a bullish trend. So this is a bullish trade. So you're trading the action, and the action is the trend. That's where you get your biggest bang for your buck, your biggest pop. You would still be you would have hit your initial targets. On this one, you could have taken profits, or in this case, since it's with the trend, you may hold on to it for an even longer time, where now you would have hit your initial targets, and now the market's even higher. So giving you all kinds of opportunity to uh, see how these things work. I'll make this chart a little bit bigger as we wind down this one for you. So once again, see how we had the bullish engulfing line that went with the trend. We had the stochastic crossover. And here we made a higher move high, then a higher move low, higher move highs into recent into the past recent sessions. Now we're looking for a higher move low because we're not trying to call a turn in the market even though we have a bearish engulfing line sell signal. We're expecting this just to be a correction like this was down into this area here. And then who knows, maybe it's already, it fell just short of this target, maybe it's done. I would say probably give it a little bit more time over the next couple sessions, see if it gets through this target here and then look for, um, a, look to, for a chance to buy. 
once again or who knows maybe the market is turning overall there's all kinds of fundamental geopolitical things to work into the the marketplace as well that gets a little bit more advanced that's for advanced forex traders to focus on keep it simple this is a video for beginning forex traders we want to thank you very much for listening um, to, to this video and watching it watch it again these are very simple key points that if you use them they can be a very good foundation for the basis of your trading moving forward um, to not incorporate these simple very basic fundamentals um, you are setting yourself up for uh, less chances of profitability and success in the future um, based off of 30 plus years experience in the business um, just like in any sport a fundamental is key um, think about it like this when when teams are not performing well I don't care whether you're a football player a baseball player a basketball player a hockey player what do the coaches do when, when you're losing games they get you back to practicing fundamentals why it's not to punish you it's because fundamentals are the base for winning for the base for foundation of all structures built have to be solid without the fundamentals the foundation you cannot last so these are big things I know you're saying, why doesn't he give us more information on this or that? This is There are videos coming up, and if you look at our other videos on our uh, YouTube channel, you can see other lessons. But for a beginning Forex trader, I cannot stress it enough. If you do not follow trend dynamics initially and focus on that, and then incorporating whatever indicator you want, you can do that, but then you really want to have something even more. you got to have a valid reason for entry, and uh, whether it is bullish or bearish. Um, high probable Japanese candlestick patterns, I rely on them. They work. I've been using them for decades, um, and there, but there's a proper way to apply them. Read the book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns. That will help you out. Remember, you can access that from our navigation bar. You go to the Products, Courses, and Services bar here. You go to High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, and that will show you what's going on. So, in fact, what I'll do is I'll pull up another one because I don't want to lose the chart. You hit the High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns on our website forex-trading-unlock.com there's a little video here about um, high probable Japanese candlestick patterns that you can watch on uh, our website here and then here it has a cover of the book you can either buy it you can share it and you can preview it if you preview it as you can see here chapter one you can go through it and start to read it and get an idea of what the book is all about and after you've read the book and especially certain chapters like the money management, that's when you can get into trading. Until you read the, our chapter on money management in that book, I highly suggest you do not start trading. Um, and also, we show you how to incorporate these bearish and bullish um, sell signals and buy signals into any trading plan for um, whether you are a beginner or advanced trader. And if you are a beginner, all the better. We can show you ways on how to start um, very modestly with um, having rational expectations, rational goals and that you can that you can meet and get you started in uh, not just Forex trading, but in getting you going in the proper way overall, period. Okay, so that is very, very big. Now, just also real quick, I want to show you um, from our uh, tools navigation bar, we have the partners page. From our partners page, there's always questions about, you know, who do we recommend? Um, as far as brokers here, we have Forex.com. We have uh, access to you here. Um, then we also have MultiCharts, which is one of our trading platform uh, providers. And then we also have um, other partners also that you can access from our website depending on the page so definitely check out those things um, we want to appreciate we want to say thank you very much for you taking your time and before we end the video we want to sh show you this which is really important um, if you want to follow up on other videos and what's going on Forex Trading Unlocked on YouTube this is our channel from our channel we always have just like on our home page our current weekly analysis video uh, up that you can access right away you can see the most current uploads obviously that are here we did um, one for today um, then we have our created playlist here we have today's lessons um, we have trading lessons we have uh, repeat videos for the week and for the day daily analysis we have other um, tfnn.com these are videos from our uh, 
interviews on there. We have featured channels, so eOption, Nadex, and TFNN.com. We've done videos for all of these and webinars for all of these. Every Wednesday, you can find us on TFNN.com at uh, 8.40 past the hour uh, Eastern time. Once a month, we or around once a month, we do uh, uh, webinars for eOption.com. Uh, we also do uh, webinars for the Nadex as well. You can see those past ones on our playlist here. You can see from TFNN.com, eOption.com, Nadex, and stuff. This is all forex trading unlocked. We are we work with uh, major brokers, all major, all very compliant, regulated uh, institutions. Um, we do not deal with uh, any of the fly-by-night, uh, get-rich-quicker, and uh, the uh, shadier companies that are involved, involved in the Forex space. Please be careful with uh, who you do deal with. Deal with professionals. You can see that on our website. We have disclaimers all over the place. No matter what page you're on, we have our disclaimers. Um, Ninja Trader, you can download from almost every page on our website as well check them out so um and definitely subscribe to our youtube channel so you know when our webinars are coming out in the future so thank you very much for your time once again i want to say thank you uh from all of us at forex trading unlocked high probable japanese candlestick patterns available on amazon.com in paperback and kindle versions check it out and uh, read it if you're an amazon prime reader i remember you can read it for free so definitely check that out Thank you very much. I'm Teddy Kekstet from forex-trading-unlock.com. You have a wonderful day. And uh, if you uh, didn't catch all this video, watch it again and from the beginning. And after that, watch it again and again and again until you get the trend dynamics and those very basic skills for beginning forex traders. And get ready for our next webinar because we will have another one coming.